we're live. <clears throat> Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Home Stay at Home Live Cooking Demonstration Series. So we're coming to you live every day over the next 30 days uh, showing you different recipes. Our message is just because we have to stay home doesn't mean we have to stay inside. So today we thought we would do uh, uh, Easter is coming up on Sunday and a lot of people like to do ham so we thought we would show you uh, my favorite way I do this every year uh, to do an actual ham. So we'll get started. I've got uh, some things going here already. Um, I put a can of Dr. Pepper. We're gonna make a glaze for this particular recipe. So I've got some Dr. Pepper that's warming up in this saucepan here. So we'll get to that. But first we're gonna talk about the actual ham itself. Um, this is a spiral cut ham. Not what I normally choose. Uh, this would not be my top preference, but in today's times, I mean, you take what you can get when you go to the grocery store. So it's a spiral cut ham. And what has actually been done here is we made, um, we scored it basically so you just you basically make a diamond pattern and then we have cloves and the cloves are on the point of each diamond so as this cooks you're going to see why that's an important step when we start uh, glazing it that that's going to kind of separate and we'll have some separations where that's actually already pre-cut with a spiral cut but again uh, that's an eight pound ham so kind of take what you can get so a couple things we're going to use this, this this setup here first is the uh, V-rack with the drip pan. You can use this for all kinds of things. Uh, prime rib, different roasts, uh, works great for that. So everything when I start basting it's going to fall down into that pan and I'm not making a huge mess. Uh, it gives a little bit of airflow underneath the ham as well. You could turn this rack also, if you turn it upside down, it becomes a uh, rib rack. So it actually holds, you can do six slabs of ribs on the, on the egg. So another little trick here I've got uh, set up, we're at 345 degrees. I'm going to let that kind of dial down to 325 for this recipe. You can go slower than that on a ham if you wanted to do 250 degrees, you can as well. Uh, but we're going to shoot for 325, so that'll come down here shortly. Uh, this is the actual, this has two probes. Uh, I've got this one ready to go in the meat, and I'm going to plug it in here. So it's reading 345 on the internal uh, temperature of the egg. And then when I plug this in, we're going to actually keep an eye on uh, the internal temperature of the ham. The reason why I'm doing that, it's beautiful outside today. Uh, who knows what Sunday is going to bring. If you're doing your ham on Sunday, it could be cold. I think it might be rain in the forecast. Um, at that case, I'd rather probably watch from inside. So I just want to kind of figure out where the center of the ham is going to be and measure that off. Get right down in the middle, make sure it don't hit the bone and just get it to about there should be dead center. Uh, we will go ahead and plug this into our Remember, these are pretty cool. You can change. I didn't even mess with it today. I think it's going to say lamb. Oops. I think it's going to say lamb up there. And then the internal temperature is 342 in the egg and 41 degrees in the center of the ham. So we're going to shoot. Basically, ham is already cooked. We're warming it up. Uh, so we're going to shoot for an internal temperature of about 140 degrees. So that's going to take a little while to get there. But this is handy. You can take this anywhere in the house, 300 foot range, and I can watch, uh, I can watch a boat. Okay, so this would go inside. Set it over there so I don't forget to take it inside. And we're going to go ahead and put the ham on. I'll kind of show you our setup. You see the smoke coming out. That is just got a fresh new container of the black cherry flavor of the smoker bricks. I want to show something too if it'll show up on camera. You can see that. I didn't put that in there. That is literally, these are bourbon infused blocks of wood that they use uh, to get the flavor into the actual bourbon. And that actually is the, so this is not like your Jack Daniels chips where it's kind of dry and ground up. It has a little bit of flavor to it. These things are just outstanding. You can use whatever smoking you would that you want to. I would say go light. You don't want to go crazy on a ham. Uh, so I put four of these little, these little chunks in here. That's the smoke that's coming out. So I've got my V-rack, my drip pan. It's easier if you do this after. You know exactly where you want your wire to go. I'm gonna get that center right in the middle there. You can see we've got our convector. Our smoke, we're running at 320, shooting for 325 degrees. And then I'll just run this wire along here so it comes out close to my transmitter. And that'll give a reading. So the, obviously it just went down because I opened the lid, that'll come up for 36 degrees inside that ham shooting for 140. Uh, one other trick, if it does end up uh, become a rainy day on, on Sunday and we decide to do the ham on Sunday, uh, the rain cap does help that. So I could put this over and rain really isn't going to get inside that opening anyway. Uh, but if you want to make sure that you can use the rain cap with the new regulator. The other thing I could still use my transmitter. I would just get a little Ziploc bag and cover that, zip it up so that that doesn't, uh, that is not waterproof. So I wouldn't want that to get soaking wet. 
Okay, so we'll move over here. What I've got here is my skillet going on the mini max, or my, not my skillet, I'm sorry, my pan. And I've got a can of Dr. Pepper. This recipe is so good. Uh, and it's gonna make it smell pretty good out here too. So my ingredients that are gonna go in, three full cups of brown sugar. You did put Dr. Pepper in already? Yes, Dr. Pepper, this is an empty can, you can see. I wanted to get that started because this actually has to reduce. Uh, actually, let's do our brown sugar next. Try not to. That was how much brown sugar? Three full cups. A lot of brown sugar. But this is gonna make a glaze. It's got a red color to it, you'll see. We'll, uh, we'll go off while this is, this is cooking later uh, and then come back so you can see the finished product. So here I have three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and then a half a cup of spicy brown mustard. Not something I would ever put on a dish, but I can tell you it does do just great in this recipe. This recipe, I don't know if I mentioned or not, is from Pioneer Woman. I believe her name is Ree Drummond. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great show. I like a lot of her recipes that she does. Um, this is her recipe. You can Google it and it's right on her website. It's also in her book. Um, I think it's called Glazed Easter Ham. So I'm gonna incorporate this and we're going to bring this to a boil and just try and break that. It smells good already. What we will do with this is actually bring this to a boil, get that into a nice, it'll just be a nice consistent liquid and you incorporate all this mustard and the brown sugar kind of melts down and we'll reduce it. We'll cook it for about 20 minutes and it'll get pretty thick. Um, we'll remove it from the heat. And then what I like to do, I think on her recipe, it calls for two hours after two hours. It's an oven recipe, by the way. If you look it up, it's gonna tell you how to do it in the oven at 325. Uh, why do it in the oven when you can come outside and do it on the egg is the way I look at it. So, uh, she recommends two hours before you start basting. I recommend, I'm probably going to give it about 30 minutes and then I'm going to start uh, doing the baste. So what I'll do is that will, that will reduce down and I've got this handy little, I can even put this on the egg sometimes to keep it warm. Uh, put it in here and then I've got my basting brush. So once we get to that point, while we're not on video during that time frame, every 20 minutes I will baste the outside of the... Uh, of the ham to try and get a glaze. Okay, so we'll let that start warming up here. And while we're doing that, we did not, since we came on with everything already uh, ready to go, I'll just show you, there's been several questions about how do you set up, and you can always, you can always call the store and, and get the information as well. Um, but let me just show you exactly, let's say we were going to set this up for what we just did over here to cook the ham. This is the condition that it was in the last time that I cooked on this particular egg. And like every video, at one o'clock when we start this, the wind picks up. So I'm sorry if the audio is now all of a sudden picking up nothing but wind, but it just seems to work that way every time we do this. Um, so here's what is left from the charcoal the last time we cooked. This is the line, you can see this line that goes all the way around here. We call that the fire bowl. This is the fire box on the bigger egg. So where that touches, those, that point right there, that is in most cases in almost everything you cook, that's how much charcoal you need. So you can tell just by looking at this, the last time we cooked on here, we didn't burn a whole lot. Uh, I probably wouldn't add any more to that. So all I would do to set this up to cook our Easter ham would be to light it, number one. So in this case, we could use a fire starter stick, take this, drop it right down there in the center and light it. And we've shown this before. Once it gets going, maybe just pull a little bit of charcoal over it, make sure the draft door is open uh, and bring the temperature up to the target of 325. Once we get to that point, uh, obviously we would have our cap on there, not the, not the rain cap, but once I get to that point, then I take my convector. This is the convector for the smaller one. So it's actually in that egg right now in operation, but I would take my convector that would be the right size, it's set right there, it would come up to about this point, and then I put my grate on top of that. That's, that's, it's that simple. Your smoking woods would go in there on top of the uh, charcoal before you do that step. And that's how you would uh, set up for basically as an oven at 325. And there goes the wind. Grab our light stuff. Perhaps that front they're talking about is getting closer. Just gonna check our front to look pretty good here. 
What are your temperature control tricks? Uh, yeah, we mentioned that before on the, just as a rule of thumb. Let me put a cap on here to show you. Most people have the other cap. Just basics for new, new egg owners or existing egg owners. A trick I've learned that has just helped me. Uh, so with this, with the holes open, because this will slide as well, we don't want to do that. Just with the holes open, like so, on this setup, one credit card opening down here at the bottom once the egg is lit. If I have one credit card opening, where you literally, you can slip your credit or debit card in there, uh, that will normally maintain 225 to 250 degrees. That's the only airflow it needs. If I slide it open to about an index finger opening, that will get me up to 350. So if we're doing the ham, I would do that. And then I might find for 350, I might just dial it down just a little bit more. Uh, it also depends if you've got wind coming at it, you may have to, but just that's, that's a pretty good start. If you go two fingers on the opening or a couple inches, uh, now you're gonna hit 450 degrees with the cap in that mode. And then as you wanna go up from there, the more you increase the airflow on the bottom or start letting more airflow out the top, you're gonna, you're going to increase your temperature. On the regulator cap, very similar. I've got about the same opening as what that hole would be on the top. And then if you look down here, you can see not quite a, not quite the, the one finger opening there, a little bit less, but again, I'm shooting for 325 and we've got a little bit of wind today. And that is, that's, that's pretty close. I might actually open that up just a tad more. So uh, moving over here, just check on our, yeah, we're starting to start to steam here pretty good. Again, that was a whole can of Dr. Pepper. I think, uh, I think Pioneer Woman says you can use Coca-Cola as well. I have only used Dr. Pepper. It's just got a beautiful color to it. The goal here is gonna be the glaze. And again, what we'll do with that, we're going to bring that to a boil, because we're about done. I think we talked about everything there. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then cook it. Once it's boiling, I'm gonna cook it for about 20 minutes to actually reduce it down. We'll probably reduce it down half of that to where I think normally I end up with one of these full and just a little bit left over. And then in the ham itself, every 20 minutes, I'm gonna wait about a half an hour, and then every 20 minutes, I'm just gonna go out and, and hit it with a brush, all sides and baste it uh, to try and get that, that glaze. You'll see when uh, we'll, we'll go off, off camera and then we'll come back and actually show you the end result. If you see anything here, uh, the store is obviously still open today and tomorrow. You know, we're taking some safe measures to help you out with your shopping needs. You can go to outdoorhome.com and place your order and we'll bring it to you or ship it to you. You can also do curbside pickup has been pretty popular as well. So you can give us a call, tell us what you need. Maybe you wanna do the hand setup that you need some of this stuff. Uh, call us ahead of time or when you get there and we'll bring it out to you. You can get out of the house, but stay inside your car. Uh, so trying to make it, yeah, we're, we're starting to boil up here. Pretty good on this. So stay, stay, stay safe, stay home. Uh, but don't stay inside. Get out and try something new on the grill, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Or we'll see you in this is... I guess we'll see you in... <laughs> yes, we'll see you in a couple hours. I'm guessing two, two and a half hours on that ham, so we'll come back and do that, and then maybe we'll see you tomorrow. We are going to take Easter off. Uh, everybody, nobody's going to be doing any videos on Easter, so thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Okay, are we live? We are. Excellent. Welcome back everybody to the Outdoor Home Stay at Home Live Cooking Demonstration. So this is part two of the uh, series that we started earlier today. At uh, one o'clock we came on. If you're, if you're just now tuning in, you'll wanna go back and watch the first part where we actually prepared and put the ham on and we were making the uh, glaze for the ham. So this is the uh, Pioneer Woman's recipe for glazed ham. With Easter coming up on Sunday, we thought it might be a good idea to show you how easy this is. So. We are now complete. It's been about three hours, I think just over three hours uh, since we since we put everything on. So we talked about, I've got the other trans, uh, the receiver is inside, but we're reading 329 still on the inside of the egg and 144 degrees on the actual ham itself. So shooting for 140 is done. So 144 is perfect. Again, ham is cooked. It's just a matter of, of reheating it. So this is nice. It's out here if we're outside, but we're able to keep an eye on it while we were indoors. Uh, and the ham is now finished. So we'll go ahead and pull that off. I did want to show, because we showed you how to make the glaze earlier. Uh, we still have plenty of this left over. I don't know if you can see how that thickens up. Again, that was Dr. Pepper, 
a bunch of brown sugar, like three cups of brown sugar, spicy brown mustard, and uh, apple cider vinegar. So this stuff thickens up real nice. It is tasty. Um, so it's good when you have this left over because this obviously is the next step that we would want to do. We'll go ahead and pull the ham off and see what we got. It was basted, kind of backtracking what we did here. Uh, the ham went on and after the first hour or so of cooking the ham, we start at 325 degrees, we started basting it every 20 minutes. Toward the end, you can do it even more frequently because you're trying to get that glaze on the outside, almost like candy. So I'm gonna pull this off, we'll set it here where we can take a look. Again, just a little over three hours. Yeah, that's beautiful. So we've got our V-rack here with our drip pan that kind of caught all those drippings. Let's clean up a real breeze. Get both, both sides there. You can see where we scored it. Now again, this is a spiral cut ham, so it's already sliced. Um, but as we mentioned, and nowadays at the grocery store, you, you take what you can get. Uh, I prefer the other style ham where it's all complete. And actually, we normally do the entire ham. We love the leftovers. Uh, but that, that is a thing of beauty. You can brush it down one more time. You can take your glaze. Just since you weren't here for this part, kind of see when you put this stuff on, it goes on real real nice and thick and I would probably do this right before you bring it inside so. and this stuff is just tasty this point in time what I would do is take it inside let it cool for just a minute and then remove the ham from uh, we'd go ahead and remove it from here carve up all the slices I would put it on a serving platter with all the slices ready to go for our guests um, and then use that uh, use that sauce and kind of pour that over so that it's on every slice of ham when they pull it off. So there's our completed glazed Easter ham, pioneer woman recipe. Uh, let's get some close ups here. We're not gonna carve into that. It's pretty hot right now, so we won't do our normal virtual bite, but. So don't be afraid to try something. Get outdoors and try something on the grill. We're doing this every day. Uh, we are going to take this is Friday. We are going to uh, uh, take off Easter from recording. We're not going to have any of us. We'll probably be cooking in our backyards, but we're not going to do any recording. However, we are coming on live tomorrow. Uh, and the plan is we're actually going to have Bev and RD will be broadcasting live from their backyard doing uh, meatloaf. And that's where it all started in this area in 1995. Uh, it started with a dream to, build a, to start a barbecue store. And they started selling these bigger and egg products and got us all hooked on this. So that's a that's a special treat so make sure you tune in tomorrow at one o'clock for bev and rd uh doing live uh making a meatloaf which is supposed to be pretty good so we'll get a virtual bite of that uh, if you have any questions put them in the comments of course we'll we'll address those as soon as we can and uh we'll see you again soon thanks for watching